Today I'm going to show you how to build a scroller that loops its contents and we're starting right now. What's going on folks? This is Alex from nativescripting.com where I teach NativeScript video courses. You can see more in the description down below. If you want to learn more about NativeScript, click on the subscribe button and the little bell so you never miss anything. Folks, welcome to another episode of iScript Native, where you ask me questions and I answer them right here in video format. You got NativeScript questions? Put them right down below in the comments. All right, this question comes from Vikas. He says, please make a video on custom action bar with hiding effect on scrolling. I already did that a couple weeks ago, so there you go. And he also says, please, please, please make another video on infinite horizontal scroll view of five buttons. Hey, guess what, Vikas? That's what we're doing today. We're not using buttons, we're gonna use labels, but it'll give you the same effect. By the way, this is a continuation of the previous video I did using the scroll view and using a horizontal scroll view where you scroll to a position programmatically. If you haven't seen that video, check that out. And we're starting from that point. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna use the native script CLI to create a new project called circular list. And I'm gonna give it the TSC flag to scaffold out a TypeScript project based on the Hello World template. And while it's doing it, that's gonna take just a few seconds to do. And when it's done, I'm gonna change my directory into that project and open this up in Visual Studio Code. Here we go. Now I'm gonna use a similar setup to what we had in the previous video I did with the scroll view. That's the scroll view, scroll to position demo that I created in the last episode. Check that video out. All right, here we're gonna go to main page. I'm gonna pop over mainpage.ts, code behind file, and we need to do some styling. So I'm gonna delete everything from CSS, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in some styles I have already. You don't wanna see me styling this stuff, so this is gonna be a grid layout style with some padding and a label style. I'm just gonna give us some colors and so on. Okay, so here we are in the mainpage.ts. We'll come back to that. Let's clean up the XML a little bit here. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this stack layout and inside of it, this is where I want my scroll view to live. I'll just wrap it inside a grid layout here. So inside here, I'll have a scroll view. This is what we're scrolling back and forth. This is gonna represent our infinite scroll or our fake infinite scroll. We're gonna fake this uh, with a few items and you'll see what we're up to here in a bit. So inside the scroll view, we're gonna host a repeater. Now uh, you could also do this with a list view but the automatic scrolling API is gonna be different for a list view than a repeater. The repeater has a couple of templates that you can specify. One of them is the items layout, and we wanna use a stack layout here. So I'm gonna position my stack layout horizontally so that we have a vertically scrolling repeater. So I'm gonna specify a stack layout here, and it's gonna have orientation set to horizontal. We also need to set the horizontal orientation on the scroll view. So we're scrolling back and forth horizontally and um, we're gonna use the loaded event so we can get to the scroll view immediately when we need it. On scroll loaded. It's gonna be our handler for that. And the repeater is usually bound to some items. Without any items, you're not gonna see anything. So let's give our repeater a property of items and let's bind it to an items array like. So I'm calling this array like, you'll see why in a minute. You can bind a repeater to an array or an observable array, or if you wanna create your own structure, you can, and that's what we're gonna do here. So this is the layout for the repeater, we've defined that, but we also need to define the item template for the repeater. This is how each item is gonna look. Each one of our items is gonna be just a label, and remember that class that I've already pasted in? Right here, we're gonna use this class, my-lbl, and the text of the label is gonna be the value, because we're just gonna have an array of strings. This dollar value is how you access each string in a repeater or in a list view. Okay, great. So we have everything set up except for our code behind. We need a couple of things in there. We, first, we need items. That's the list of things we're gonna bind to. And then we need on scroll loaded. So let's go to our code behind. I'm gonna just clear out all these comments and export a function called on scroll loaded. So this is gonna have some args with event data so this handler will trigger when the scroll view loads. That means args.object is gonna be the scroll view itself. So I'm gonna cast this to scroll view. We need to import scroll view. And that's coming from TNS core modules, UI scroll view. 
Now, as far as our view model and where we put our items, since we're using data binding here, this is the data binding syntax, we could use the hello world model. This is the view model that's going to become the binding context for the page. Or we can just bypass the entire view model class and do everything right here by using the from object. So from object is a function that comes from TNS core modules data observable, and it creates us an observable from an object. So page dot binding context can be from object, and we can pass it some object that has the items property on it. So this will work. And now we don't need to have this main view model. If you're using angular, or if you're using view, you don't really need to worry about this because this will be inside your class. All right, so where does the magic happen? Well, the magic happens here. This items right now is just a plain old JavaScript array, but we're going to create our own type. And you'll see this in a bit. First, let's go ahead and fill these items with something that we can use. So I'm going to bring it out here. Actually, I'm going to create a constant items. And let's just have it be an empty array right here. And this object right here is going to be just items equals items. So we're going to pass in this array. Let's fill this array. I'm going to create a for loop here. And I'm going to iterate just five items. This technique is useful for a number of items. But I wouldn't recommend this technique to be used for large arrays. In fact, you don't really need it because you want a repeating looping, you want a circular list and a circular repeating list because you have a small number of items to show. So here, we'll use five as an example to start with because it's going to be easier for us to see. So each time we iterate through this loop, I'm going to create a new item. Let's call it item and plus the index. And I'm going to push it into the items array. So this items array is going to have five strings in it. I'm going to head back out here and run this in iOS. And let's see what we get. I'll fast forward until we get the simulator up. And we'll also be doing this in Android as well in just a minute. Okay, and there's our demo. Let me just bring the code screen back up. So we have all these labels that are lined up horizontally, and you can scroll them horizontally. There's item zero through item one, two, three, four. And as you can see, if we get to the end here, there's no more. So it bounces back. And if we get to the beginning, there's no more. It bounces back. Okay, a couple of things you want to take a look at. At the bottom, you'll see a little scroll bar. If I scroll here, you'll see that the scroll bar animates and it moves along to let us know approximately where we are. Well, if we're going to have a list and we're going to trick the user to think that this is an infinite list, we want to hide that scroll bar. So on the scroll view, there's a property we can set called scroll bar indicator visible. I'm going to set that to false, of course, so we don't see it. And now if I scroll, you see that nothing's visible down there, but we still have only five items and clearly five items. So here comes the magic part. Instead of this array, I'm going to create my own type. Let's go out here. I'm going to create something called my array .ts, And this is just going to export a class called my array. I can even make it generic type T. So what does an array need to have in order for us to use it? Really, what I want to do here is items should be new my array of string in our case, you can make it of any object you want. But in our case, it's just going to be strings. And I'm going to need to import my array, of course, there we go. So what does this items need to have in order for the repeater and the list view to work with it? Well, first, you can see right here, we need the push function. So we need to have that in there. We also need two other functions that are important. Let's create a public push function. And we're just going to mimic the way the regular array works. And the regular array takes a set of items here with the spread operator, and they're of type T array, and returns a number. All I'm going to do is just create a local private array here and pass everything into that. So I'm going to delegate the push function into our array. So it's going to be a new array. It's going to be of type T also. And our push function, all we're going to do is just delegate to that. And I'm going to send in the items using the spread operator, of course. There we go. And I need to return the result of that so that we get the number back. And now the surface is exactly the same as a regular array to the outside world. So now on my main page, we don't get any complaints from TypeScript when we push into that array. Okay, but our repeater is not going to work quite yet. 
our repeater needs to know the length of the array. Public get length. This will be the property that returns the length. So we're going to return this dot array dot length, which is passing through. And one more public get item. So the repeater is going to call get item for each of the items and it's going to pass in the index, which is a number, and return to us the element that's at that index, which is of type T. So the get item function is going to use this dot array and it's going to call or it's going to use the index to get that item. Now let's save everything and see if this even works. I'm going to take a look at our app. It's going to restart. And yeah, wow, that works. It works the same way that it did before. So we're using this new MyArray class, which is just our own class, instead of an array or even an observable array in NativeScript. Very cool. But it's not giving us that circular array. All right, well, let's go back to MyArray. And we're going to do a couple of tricky things here. The first thing we're going to do is return length. The length that we're going to return is not going to be the actual length of the array, but it's going to be something, some large number, arbitrary large number. I'm going to say a thousand. All right. It probably doesn't need to be that large. In fact, if it's that large and you're using a repeater, not a list view, then your thousand labels are going to be created. And that's probably not good for performance. So I would use a smaller number, maybe like even a hundred, which should be enough. But a thousand also works. So when NativeScript goes and checks the length of this array, it's going to get a thousand back. And it's going to ask this array 1000 times, get item for index zero, get item for index one, get item for index two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to a thousand. But we know that our array only actually has five items because we've only added five items to it. So if we call this function get item with index of 800, it's going to fail. What we actually need to do is instead of returning this dot array and then looking by the index, we first need to use the modulo operator. So we need to return this dot array and then we're going to use index modulo this dot array dot length. And this way our index will always be between zero and five or however many items you've placed in that array. In our case, it's five. So let's save this and take a look. Our app restarts. And notice here, I can't go back, but that's okay. We'll fix that shortly. We start with item zero, item one, item two, item three, item four, and we keep going. We're back to item zero, item one, item two, item three, item four, and we can just keep on going. Look at that. We can keep on scrolling. And there's no indication down at the bottom where we are. So you can kind of see where I'm headed with this. Here, we're going to get lost in the middle somewhere. And we don't know where we are, but the items just keep repeating. So in a way, this kind of becomes like a circular list. We're fooling the user into thinking that this is a circular list. Now, of course, if we get to the end of the list, then you'll know that we're at the end of the list, whether it's to the right or to the left. But if you start the user out somewhere in the middle, then they don't really have a clue. They'll just see repeating items eventually, and they'll think, oh, okay, well, I've seen all of them. I'm just going to head back now. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's go back here. And we have this on scroll loaded event. And we're getting the scroll view. Well, the scroll view has an API. And we can actually scroll the scroll view automatically. So we can say scroll view, scroll to horizontal offset, just like this. And I covered this in my previous video on the scroll view and how to automatically go from place to place. But we did the animated version before. Now we're doing the not animated version. So here I can use the SV scrollable width property. I'm going to divide this by two. So we kind of end up in the middle somewhere. In the beginning, I'm just going to show you the animated version, which is which is going to animate our scrolling if I pass in the second parameter as true. However, this won't work just yet. Let me save this and bring up my simulator and you'll take a look why. Okay, so here we are. Nothing happened. We loaded, but it didn't scroll. So we need a little bit of a timeout here. I'm going to set a quick timeout. And inside the timeout, 
That's where I'm going to call this scroll to horizontal offset function. And the timeout can be really anything. We can have this be really short, like one. I'm going to have it be 10. 10 milliseconds is enough. It's not going to be noticeable to the user, but it'll scroll our scroll view. So let's take a look at that. When I save this, our app restarts, and the scroll view scrolls to the middle of the list. We don't know where we are as the user. We just think we're somewhere in the middle of this list, or maybe it's a circular list. You never know. But we see the five items, and they keep repeating. Now, you saw the animation happening in the beginning, and that's fine. You can use the animation, or we can set this to false, and it won't be animated. It'll just pop up in the middle of the screen, just like that. And notice that we're popped up between two items. You can use some kind of offset here, depending on how big your cards are or your labels. Let's say, I don't know, I'm just approximating here. Maybe mine is 80 or 160. You want to do half of that. So, yeah, that works. So now the card pops up kind of in the middle. Or you can do even a little bit more to get one item in the middle. Anyway, you can play around with that size. What if we had more items here? What if we had 10 items? I'm going to save this and this will still work. So we have items zero through nine now, and it's still a circular list. Wonderful. Here we are on Android and we have the same effect on Android as well. And there's our circular list. All right, so there you go, Vikas. Hopefully that answered your question and solved your native script problem. If you have native script related questions, let me know down below. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there where I tweet about native script all the time. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can get the latest notifications about tips, tricks, and tutorials. You got to ring the little bell though so you get those notifications. And I will see you next time.